All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. Super excited about this particular part that we're about to put in our shop Supra, AKA Silver Speed. Personally, I've had this heat exchanger, not this exact one, but the guys at CSF gave me a heat exchanger to try out when they first released it last year, late in late 2020. Because of the high demand and so many Supras wanting this upgrade, uh, I've kept giving my personal one away until CSF got new inventory happened over and over again. We've probably done over 10 of these in the last couple months alone. But finally, they've got a big batch in stock. Mine came in. We're gonna install it today uh, and talk about uh, how this radiator can make a huge difference on how the B58 runs on track and on a daily basis. So talking about what the B58 heat exchanger actually does is that most of you may know the Supra B58 is a water-cooled force induction system. Um, typically in the past, there's force induction systems that are intercooled, and that means that the charged air from the turbo is actually going through a front-mounted intercooler that you see, you know, everyone's got a big intercooler sticking out the front bumper, and that's an air-to-air -air cooling system. In the Supra B58, and in all actual BMW B58s, that's a water-cooled force induction system, meaning that there's a cooler inside the intake manifold that has water running through it that absorbs the heat from the turbo and cools the charged air right before it goes into the cylinders. So the water that's absorbing the heat from the charged air needs its own system for cooling. So the water in the heat exchanger goes to the front and it goes to this, which is uh, front mounted. And that's why it's called a front mounted heat exchanger. And this, that, that hot water uh, that was absorbed in the intake is cooled in the front with this heat exchanger. So the factory heat exchanger is a lot smaller uh, as you'll see when Serge finally gets it out, he's been on this for about 30 minutes. Oh, all right. Never mind, Serge already got it out. So cool. So let me grab the stock one. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So this is the stock Supra heat exchanger. Thank you, Serge. As you can see, not only is it a little bit taller, or is it the same height? It's the same height, right? Just a lot thicker. But look at the thickness of this. And there goes all the coolant. <laughs> look at that thickness. So the air that's going through there, you know, it's traveling just through here. And that's, it's all about surface area uh, for the heat exchange. Besides the actual size difference and the thickness difference between the stock one, CSF has their own patented B-tube technology. So in the stock one, the water's only passing through this whole face once from the hot side to the cold side. CSF has it internally designed where water, the hot water enters, goes across once, goes across again. So besides the thickness, you're getting that hot water to pass through this much larger system. To help with the heat exchange too, their B-tube technology, that means their design on these fins um, helps create that surface area for exchange. So the more turns and the more folds and, and all that, uh, it allows the air to go through, but it also allows for more surface area to allow for the heat exchange to happen. So I, we'll get this in and show you some part of that install. There is some trimming involved with the CSF heat exchanger, but it's very minimal and they provide you with nice hardware, everything you need to get it installed. So let's see how that goes. And what these replace is the mounting bracket for the transmission. Well, that is one of the pieces that we're gonna have to trim off. Um, it usually on the stock one, it's usually right in this area here, but it's built into the plastic of the shroud. Um, so these two will replace that and then they'll slide right into the slots there for the transmission cooler. So these brackets here are what we're cutting off on both sides. So as you can see on this side, it's already flush. That one's already been cut. And then we'll be cutting this side here as well. That way it just slips in easier. If not, it pokes out and it'll hit that there. So right here is actually the bracket that we cut off here. That is the bracket that holds the transmission cooler into place. Uh, with the oversized um, CSF tr um, cooler, it doesn't actually work and it's too thick and so now that we cut off that side we're trimming this side here we left a little bit we have to make sure it's nice and flush with the surround plastic that way it'll clear the larger uh, heat exchanger 
So what I do to make the install easier is this transmission cooler actually is on a, um, the ends that it's on, it actually can swivel. So you can actually turn it back and forth as you please. Um, so right now we're gonna put the big uh, heat exchanger on and then once it's in, we actually have enough room to turn it the other way and it'll sit right into its spot. You wanna make sure these brackets are tight because this is exactly where the tranny slips into, the tranny um, cooler slips into. So you want to make sure that you have no movement or play for it to rub back and forth against each other. And then here's the extra hardware too. If you notice they have, both of these have holes here. When it slips in, you can actually use these bolts to tighten them down. That way it's very secure. As you can see, if with those tabs cut, it falls right into place. So now we're just gonna make sure we secure everything properly and then secure the transmission cooler onto it as well. And then with these clips here, you just have to make sure that they seat in all the way. Make sure they're pushed in. The little clip should snap into place when you have a good solid fit. And then now we're gonna go to the bottom, connect the bottom one, and then make sure we turn the transmission cooler back around. And then it'll be, um, we'll use those other two bolts that we had provided to tighten it down to the um, heat exchanger. Again, the same thing with the bottom. You just wanna make sure that C-clip goes in correctly and you hear that solid click into the spot. Make sure to tug on it a few times, see if it comes back out. If not, it's a good solid fit. The fitment is great. It slides right into the OEM pockets here on the side. You can tell that they created a little triangle to make sure it fits perfectly on both sides. Um, the, uh, the end tanks line up perfectly where the OEM one is. There's no fidgeting, there's no stretching anything. Everything just fits right directly where OEM. So now that we have the CSF heat exchanger in, we have the tranny uh, cooler mounted to it down there. Can't really see it too well, but it's down there. It's mounted to the uh, heat exchanger itself. Now we're gonna go ahead and start covering everything up. Uh, I like to, this uh, cable for the uh, hood here, it actually is supposed to run above um, over this panel here. But what we like to do is we like to tuck it underneath and then that way you actually don't see the cable running there anymore. So once I get it all fitted, the cable will run underneath and the hood will still function properly. You know, and nothing will be misaligned. You wanna be careful. You just wanna make sure you get all these bolts here with the washers above them and then they'll just slide into place here. Like so. And you'll move the cable out of the way there and then you'll be able to close everything. And fall back into place. And then for these, usually I just like to put them all in hand tight and then come back with the gun and then go ahead and go over them all. That way you make sure they all fit, you're not Stripping any bolts, anything, and all the holes are perfectly aligned. All these are 13, so you can just go with a 13 socket and go ahead and tighten them all down. You can't really take these off without taking the bumper off. You can loosen them a good amount, just enough to slide this out, and then just do a few more turns with the wrench here, and then that'll secure it into place. Usually what I do with those, I just hand tighten them as much as I can, and then I go in with the wrench for the last few turns, because they're pretty tight in there. And that's it for up here, and then now we're gonna shoot to the bottom, put on this plastic here that goes underneath just right before the guard there and then we'll be all set. So that bottom plastic piece is held on by these little uh, T30s. Not too bad. They go on one on each side and then that'll hold that plastic piece up before putting on the last plastic underneath.
All right, just make sure all the fasteners are tight. And then now we're to the final step, for refilling the coolant. You always got to make sure anytime you do anything with coolant, you want to double check the levels afterwards. Most likely we're going to need to add some since we did just take out the heat exchanger. So we'll add some. A lot of the fluid will probably get drained into the heat exchanger. It'll fill it up and then we'll have to add some more accordingly. So what we're going to do now is just go ahead and top off the coolant. Um, since we did take out the heat exchanger, it holds a good amount of fluid. I believe it's about four quarts. Um, so we're going to go ahead, fill it now, and then start the car, let it run for a little bit, and then let it cool. And then we'll go ahead and check with the fluid back again. And then as you can see, you can see kind of the bubble coming up, so that's it just refilling the whole system. Again. So like I said, now that we have it filled to what we think is max, we're gonna go ahead and start the car for a little bit, let it warm up, let it open it up. Um, it's gonna flow all the fluid through the heat exchanger itself. And then we'll come back and check it and make sure it's all popped off. We don't need to add any extra fluid. We let the car run for a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and open up the second reservoir and then double check the fluid there. As you can see, let's get some light on it. It did go down, I see, a little bit. That's why you always wanna double check. That way we can add a little more, top it off again, and then we'll go ahead and do the same process just to make sure that we get as much fluid in as we can. And then as you can see, it's bubbling again still, because there's still air in the system. So as you can see, it finally stopped taking in air. It's just very some little bubbles still coming up. So we'll go ahead and close it up, and let the car run again for another few minutes, and then go ahead and check back with it. We let the car run one more time, so now we're going to go ahead and um, check the lower uh, temp reservoir again. And then for this one, it's not as pressurized as this one, so you don't have to worry about it spewing out, but still be careful and let it the air come out if there is any. So the sea is now, finally we're just keeping some water in there, so it's right above max. We'll add just a tiny bit more and then go ahead and top close it up there we go. and we're done all right guys I'm gonna try and talk over the guys in fab but uh, the CSF b58 heat exchanger is installed Serge got it in there uh, really excited we're gonna be at button willow this weekend so stay tuned on our channel for that vlog of that track day um, so we'll try to take some data of it but um, we know that this product's gonna work we've installed like I said probably close to 20 of these on uh, various Supras and also uh, 340 BMW B58 so um, again we'll try to get some data but uh, thank you guys for watching stay tuned follow at Supermark 5 uh, for more updates about new products follow our Instagram at Studio RSR and our website is StudioRSR.com Always too, remember to like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Stay tuned. Oh, real quick thing, guys. The last thing. Uh, we recently took over this part of the warehouse and this is our new storage area. Um, so if you guys know anyone in the SoCal, Orange County area that needs a car storage, exotic car storage, um, I'm not sure about all, everyone else across the country, but driveway space is limited and we all have to have our toys. So we figured we'd take over this spot we have a lot of toys ourselves, but we are opening it up to the public and it's gonna be called Drivers and Collectors Storage. So please stay tuned for that. The Instagram for that is at Drivers and Collectors. Um, so yeah, give us a call if you guys need any storage needs. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Stay tuned.